We've made a massive, massive blunder, massive mistake for the whole time we've been driving this tuk-tuk. Such a silly mistake. I'll never do that again. So we basically just committed the worst crime in a rickshaw. Never mind those happy days, it's those bloody manic days today. Oh. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, aka Those Happy Days, a married couple from the United Kingdom. After a tough start to winter in the UK and some serious issues with our home, we decided to head out to India on a new adventure. So a couple of weeks ago, we bought a second-hand tuk-tuk, or auto rickshaw as they call them in India, with an aim to travel all over India, starting from from the south and heading north. So far we bought the rickshaw to Chennai, driven down to Mahabalipuram, then on to the French town of Pondicherry and finally Auroville, India's experimental city. In this episode we leave the safety of Auroville in Tamil Nadu and set off on our biggest road trip yet in our little rickshaw named Pete. Our overall aim for this section of the journey is to make it to India's most southerly point but before then we will be passing through some of India's smallest villages and craziest towns and cities. Wish us luck as we embark on our biggest adventure yet. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. We are leaving Auroville today and going on a massive road trip. It's the biggest road trip that we've been on in the tuk-tuk, the rickshaw so far. We've only ever driven the rickshaw two hours to Mahabalapuram, two hours to Pondicherry and then an hour to, to here. So the longest we've ever done in the rickshaw is about an hour and a half to two hours. Today, we need to be covering a distance of at least four and a half hours driving. So it's gonna be the biggest test that we, we put onto that rickshaw so far. And I don't know how well he's gonna cope, in all honesty, I don't know. We just don't know because we've never done it before. But this is gonna be really the start of it because from this point onwards, we're gonna be covering some huge miles in India. Uh, the main goal is to go to the most southerly tip of India. Um, and it's probably going to take us quite a while to get down there because India's huge. Anyway, going to eat some fruit, have some coffee and get going. After eating our fruit and accidentally putting milk in a lemon and ginger tea, we packed up the rickshaw and got ready to leave this beautiful forest community on one of our biggest drives in India yet. Okay, let's go on a road trip. Are we ready to go? Yep. Okay, let's do this. Let's go. Stop on this road trip will be a special Indian village called Kalaya, and we will explain why it's so special when and if we find it. Oh man, those buses are so frightening. They're like the loudest things on the road and they come bolstering past you. Like, you have to really just duck out the way of them. I'd say they're the most scary things on the roads and the big, like, trucks. Do you know what I liken it to? What? Being in a canoe in the open ocean and the Titanic comes up behind you. <laughs> yeah. What do I do? Just go across. <laughs> that was frightening. Just got to go for it. Just got to go for it. You can't hesitate. You can't can hesitate. You? Just, just. There are, there are no rules. Just go for it. Trying to get through these roads, we headed off on our journey. Pete attracting the attention of other motor drivers curious about where we are from and where we're going. Conversations all finished with us wishing each other the best and huge smiles all round. We eventually ended up heading more and more into rural India. So I've just pulled over and we're just about to enter a village. I'll put the name of the village up on the screen. It's called Kaya something or other. Um, but it's commonly nick or nicknamed the village of the cooks. Which basically, for a small village, apparently the majority of the men in this village are professional chefs. Now, not just professional chefs as in they work in the local restaurant or cafe in their village or town or whatever, but like world-renowned chef. This tiny little village builds, apparently, creates 
some of the world renowned chefs and you know your Dubai's, your New York, your whatever. So the majority of the men here, whilst they get a, they get a formal education, they all go, the majority of them go in to be professional cooks. And apparently each of the boys have to spend 10 years with their father or their apprentice uh, or whatever, you know, before they get actually deemed to be a proper cook. So we couldn't think of a better place to go and try and find somewhere for a bit of brunch. Um, we've only just had a bit of fruit this morning. So let's go and check out the village of Cooks. So off we went with hungry stomachs to go grab some brunch from the village of expert chefs and we were excited. beautiful little village all the houses are like brightly colored um, can't see any restaurants though and it's tiny as well so right out in the middle of nowhere but it's lovely that's it the village of the cooks that's it where are all the restaurants liam i don't know i just i just assumed there'd be restaurants here but okay <laughs> literally no restaurants and it's the tiniest little village. I don't think we're going to find any food here. Oh. Uh, it's such a shame I was looking forward to a slap up breakfast. Like so whilst it creates the most amount of the world world class chefs in any one place, I think it's like world world sort of renowned. Um, there's nowhere to get a bite to eat. <laughs> Where we pulled over attracted the attention of some locals. However, with us not speaking the local language and them not speaking English, there was a slight language barrier. We gave it a go anyway. Kudalo this way. Uh. So, Twitchy, Kudalo uh. this way. Twitchy. Uh. Twitchy. Okay. We're just looking for uh, some breakfast, for some lunch. Break, uh, lunch. 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 But, yeah, lunch. So, this way. Oh, uh, lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Twitchy, lunch, Kudalo. Uh, this way. Yeah, <laughs> good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, Liam and Janine. 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 Yeah. Nice to meet you. All. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you all. Thank you for pointing us in the right direction. <laughs> photo. Yeah. Okay. So the commonly understood words here were food and photo. And since we knew the direction of food, we set up a group selfie before saying our goodbyes and hitting the road once more. So as you guys can see, we're coming across certain language barrier situations out here in India. What Janine and I have decided to do is try and pick up a bit of the local language so we can at least uh, talk the basics to them. So with the rest of India is concerned, English and Hindi are the two sort of main common languages. There's over 20 different languages, but apparently if you know those two, you can get by in India pretty easily. So we're gonna be learning Hindi. And thankfully it's on the Rosetta Stone app. We've used this app before to learn a bit of Spanish and now we are going to be picking up some Hindi from it as well. All the way from beginner basics to more advanced conversations and what have you. The reason why I love Rosetta Stone is they use sort of like games and visuals and audio to help you learn it and learn it quicker as well. So given the time frame that we're out here for, that's going to be really, really good because we want to learn this quickly. Lurki Karhi hai. Lurki. Lurki Kari hai. Lurki ka. Yay! Lurka Piraha hai. See, I'm already picking it up. Rosetta Stone have half price on lifetime subscriptions at the moment. We'll leave the link in the description to this video. Make sure you go and take advantage of it because you could have a whole, the, the rest of your life learning any different language from a huge list to choose from. A, it's got to be a good thing, right? Especially if you like to travel. So we've seen this place. We don't know. It looks kind of like a temple, but kind of like a restaurant. And uh, people are eating. And someone notion to us, food. So we're thinking it's a restaurant. So should we give it a go then? I don't know. If we're, I, I don't know. It's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. And on that note, we realised that they were inviting us to go inside and eat. We headed over, washing our hands and taking off our shoes on the way in. We were offered a plate of rice and samba with chutney before being showed where to sit. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. 
looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. How nice of them. We're just driving past and it's a temple and they just invited us in to, to eat straight away, just as we were driving. Yeah. yeah it was really good. And we got some delicious food. It's actually the first time we're eating with our fingers, as they do in India, they eat with our hands and no cutlery, so straight into the deep end. So with a plate of delicious food and no cutlery, we had no choice but to dig in. Such a simple thing like eating with your hands would seem quite easy on the outset. However, I found it difficult to pick it up and put it in my mouth without getting it everywhere. Also, the sensation of rice and curry between my fingers was something I'm going to have to get used to. And my instincts were saying, wash the curry off your hands. Trying not to look like amateurs, we ate with confidence. I left you all along ago don't even think I know you And you, you don't know who I am You never had a chance to Cause I was always searching in I was never there I was busy leaving you Oh wow, what an experience that was! We, um, we went in and they offered us food um, straight away, even outside they were offering us food. So we went in and sat on the floor and we sat and ate with our hands for the first time in India and it was a challenge. I made the rookie mistake of when she was offering more rice and the gravy that goes with it called Samba. I said no to the rice and yes to the samba, so my whole plate was like a puddle. Such a sausage. So, such a silly mistake. I'll never do that again. You have the rice to soak up the samba so you can eat it with your hands. And so in the end I was sort of <laughs> just scooping it up like you would scoop a soup up. Um, <laughs> won't be doing that again. Lessons learned on my first go. Anyway, where are we going now? We're going to Tanjavur. We are off to Tanjavur. So off we went to a place called Tanjavur. We needed to make some distance now as we had what we thought was a three hour road trip in front of us. At least that's what Google said. We popped into a petrol station to grab some gas on the way. This is where things went slightly wrong for us. We need to make sure that we have the correct ratio of oil to petrol in our tank or the engine could break. Having done this before, we repeated what we did last time only to realize that the measurements were wrong. This is our, this is petrol. Yeah. No mix in it. This was our mix from before. Our mix was so weak before that because we thought that these were five litre cans, stupidly, we were told they were five litre cans and we filled up and we got the wrong mix, completely mixed wrong now. So for 10 litre petrol, 10 litre is 500 oil. 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 Yeah, yeah. Huh? Even I'm confused about it. We've made a massive, massive blunder, massive mistake for the whole time we've been driving this tuk tuk. We thought that we had five litre, 500. 5 litres, 500 rupees. 500 what? 5 litres, 500 rupees. Good. 500 rupees. Yeah. 500 rupees. We've been driving this rickshaw. Um, we've had these jerry cans that we were told are 5 litres. They're clearly not 5 litres, but you know when someone tells you, the guy that sold us this said they were 5 litres. We put in the wrong amount of oil so far, which is the serious no-no when you're driving a rickshaw. So the quantities of oil, two stroke oil to petrol has been wrong this whole time. Thankfully, we haven't messed it up. And then 500 oil. Then 500 oil, yeah? So we basically just committed the worst crime in a rickshaw. Um, you do not want to be do it, have done what we've just done. The whole time we've been driving this rickshaw, we've done it wrong, and we could have completely buggered up the, the engine on it. We're just gonna have to keep an eye on it now. But again, the oil mix is wrong. It's the one thing you don't want to do. And we did it. Uh, because we, told, we were told we had five litre cans when they're 10 litre. And it's so daft because we could have just checked. But I'm so trusting in people. When someone said five litre, I don't even question it. So, lesson learned, Liam, my fault. Anyway, now we need to keep an eye on the engine and just hope that it's not damaged by what we've done. Hoping our rickshaw is okay, we waved goodbye and headed off, only to come across another problem further down the road. A really massive bus went past and caused the massive gust of wind coming straight through the tuk-tuk and uh, our yellow funnel thing that we used to fill up the oil just flew out of the side and into the middle of the road so we've had to emergency stop just to get it. 
I don't mind those happy days, it's those bloody manic days today. <laughs> Trying to find a moment of calm this afternoon, I watched as we drove past the open countryside on a relatively straight stretch of road. We were starting to realise that this trip was going to take us much longer than what it said on Google Maps, and we were concerned as we could see the sun lowering in the sky and didn't want to be driving at night. One, because our horn breaks when we put the lights on, a slight technical glitch. Two, some areas have no street lights and can be pitch black, making it really difficult to navigate and three the cows and dogs chill out on the roads at night so it can be very dangerous we have to stop the rickshaw every two hours of driving to give the engine a break however we had the threat of darkness against us too we have no choice but to pull over for an hour or so and hope we can get to our destination in the light we've had to stop because we've been pushing the engine way too much I thought we'd be having more brakes the problem with it being is that Google told us that the journey was going to take us X amount of time and it takes a lot longer by a number of hours so the planning that we've taken for this has been has taken well it doesn't mean anything um so we're now we need to get to our destination before dark um but we have having to stop here to let the engine cool down so we've literally got half an hour to let the engine cool down and then if it doesn't and then, then then we've got to go just with a chance of getting there before it gets dark literally we'll be right on the mark so um Anyway, let's go and get some Moser or something. Oh. I'm waiting for the curtain call Guess I want it all Anyway at all Thought I missed it by waiting for the game response These are vada and they're like um, lentil donuts So savoury donuts Yum Oh yeah What is it? It's, we know it's ginger and lemon but there's something else in it as well, like loads of like seeds, seeds that look a little bit frog spawny, but you know it's going to be something nice. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. That's really good. Is it? Try that. Mm. Oh my god. That's like... It's like a weird passion fruit thing, isn't it? Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> So good, isn't it? Yeah. So good. Best bloody tea I've ever had. Down with that. <laughs> <laughs> After that journey, oh my god. Mm. We sat in this nice little cafe drinking tea and eating snacks whilst Pete, our colourful rickshaw, was having a break from the day's drive. We get, you can't swim. <laughs> Why can't you swim? Because there's crocodiles. And where? Just up here? Just in the lake up there. <laughs> the so the nice gentleman in there sat next to Janine has just paid for all of our food and all of our drinks uh, he's a local guy here and he didn't need to do that and he just did it which is amazing so we went to the t temple and they gave us lunch for free um, invited us in when we were driving past and that man there just bought us um, everything on our bill without us knowing about it. He just told us when I went to go and pay. That is India. We hopped back in the rickshaw hoping that was long enough for the engine to cool down. Now our mission is to head to our destination in the light. So it's a two hour journey. God knows if that's going to be a four hour journey. We just don't know. And we need to try and get there before the sun goes Completely pitch black. <laughs> 19 minutes later, we made it just in the nick of time. We made it. 
Oh. 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 Out of all the peaceful places that we could have ended up, we've ended up in what seems to be like a massive bloody rave again. We've turned up at the loudest place that we've been to today. And this is the guest house that I think we're going to try and get in. We made our way to the accommodation. The room was big with a really soft bed, a TV, a hot shower, aircon and a fan. The room seemed good with a balcony facing the crazy festival opposite. Feeling very scruffy, we decided to head out to see if we could find a restaurant or a cafe for a bite to eat. A place called Bombay Sweets caught our eye with a nice looking restaurant in the back. We sat down and ordered. Liam got a masala dosa and I got a chana masala. Both were delicious. Since we were in a sweet shop, we decided to try something sweet for dessert and it was an Indian classic. So this is the only vegan sweet in India. <laughs> Probably is as well. Um, this is uh, Jalubi. This one hasn't got any ghee, honey or milk or anything in. Um, you might recognise it. It's basically deep fried syrup. <laughs> Indians know how to do it. The sweet stuff really well. I split it open and show you what's inside it. just so good for deep fried syrup it's so good it tastes cardamom in there it's just so nice we finished our food before heading to our guest house and calling it a night we were shattered my thoughts have never been clearer i see what you're doing to me now good morning from tangible uh, we didn't have the best night's sleep last night. Unfortunately, this bed is the softest bed in India. Uh, we've gone from a concrete bed to a really soft bed. Um, so it's, it just wasn't comfortable, probably because we've been sleeping in what feels like a concrete bed for the last sort of few nights before it. And there are a number of four-legged, six-legged, eight-legged creatures in here as well. Um, in, the doors must have been left open once again before we arrived and uh, a number of insects have come in from the outside. So you feel things crawling on you at night, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to check out of here and check into somewhere else. Um, I don't fancy another full day of driving again. So we're going to go just an hour away from here to a place called Trichy, which is short for something that I can't pronounce. Um, and that is where the next video shall start from. Um, I am going to take some time out today to do some stretching, uh, get into a bit of yoga maybe. Uh, we've both got a yoga mat here each, which we bought before coming out, anticipating how uncomfortable the long drives are gonna be. And I tell you what, I've learned so much from that journey yesterday, so much. Don't underestimate how long it's gonna take you. It will take you all day to get from, however long you think it's gonna take you, it's gonna take you the whole day to do it in India. And also, 100% concentration all day whilst driving. Janine and I have been speaking about this this morning. The roads here are so, so, so dangerous. Other drivers can be very, very dangerous as well. We don't want to give the wrong impression to you that it's a, you know, a walk in the park and it's um, anybody could do it and it's dead easy and stuff. It requires so much concentration, a bit of luck and a lot of time. The longer you can give these, this place, the better. If you're in a rush, like we were yesterday fighting that sun going down, bad things can happen. So please, if you're, if you're thinking about coming out here and driving on the roads, they are super dangerous and we just we didn't, we didn't want to have that on our conscience. So please remember that. And thank you. What an amazing day yesterday was, meeting all those really lovely people who, let's face it, quite a lot of them don't have much money in the world. We got two meals yesterday for free, even though with our best attempts to try paying for them and out of the kindness of the people's hearts here, they expected nothing in return. And that, honestly, is India for you. We hope you enjoyed the content. If you like the content, please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video for some more road tripping to hopefully we're getting closer to the most southerly point of India. We couldn't leave and press on with our South Indian road trip without taking a look at the famous Brihadasvara temple, also known as the Big Temple. This incredible ancient temple is over a thousand years old and draws millions of pilgrims each year. Like the pyramids, the Big Temple is made with huge granite blocks that were just getting warm underfoot as the sun rose higher in the sky. We were blown away by the sheer size of the place and how beautiful the 
carvings into the stoneware. Inside the temple is one of India's largest Shiva shrines known as a linga. Liam and I recognised the intensity of the temple as we approached the linga. The energy in the room was tangible and filled with a thousand years worth of reverence. To think this is our first temple on this great Indian road trip and what other surprises India has in store for us on this huge journey we're about to undertake. Us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright.